I've launched Bridge through File, Browse in Bridge in Photoshop, and Bridge comes with Photoshop. Bridge has an excellent way to import your digital camera images, whether it be from a high-end camera, a consumer class point-and-shoot camera, or a smartphone or tablet. I can choose File, Get Photos from Camera. And the first time I launch it, it'll say, would you like the photo downloader to automatically start whenever you put in a camera or card reader? I'm going to hit Don't Show Again and say no. I may just be syncing my iPhone that day and don't want to pull in images. Once you choose OK, I'll select a device. So you can see I've got a card reader in here from my higher end camera, my Nikon N1. And my iPhone is plugged in just via USB to my computer. So I'll select the iPhone. It connects to the device and then it'll find all the images on there. I actually like to use the advanced dialog. That way I can pick and choose a series of images. I don't have to bring in all 700 that are on the device. So I will hit the advanced dialog. And when I do, I can uncheck all of the images and then simply scroll and choose which ones I would like to bring in. So I'm scrolling down and I want to get to a series that I took of the Embarcadero, but there was a moment a week or two ago when there was a rainbow in downtown San Francisco and I haven't seen that in my 12 or 13 years living here. So I'll scroll quickly down to the Embarcadero series and since I'm importing different images, I'm going to choose to custom name each one. Here we go, bright blue sky. So now as I start checking off the Embarcadero images, I may decide to skip a few if they aren't of people I know who I've gotten permission to use their images in this video. So we'll go for more of the landscape shots. And once I've checked them all off, I can use Bridge to batch rename, organize, put the files in folders. So you will have this folder of images to reorganize after we're done. And there we go. So on the right, I'm going to choose to go to my desktop. I hit Command D for the Mac users, but on Windows, you could just hit desktop. I'll go to Project Files and Chapter 4, and I'll make a new folder called iPhone Images. When I click Create, this is where they'll go. I far prefer this to using iPhoto on the Mac, where it puts them in deep folders in my user folder. This lets me choose how I'd like to organize my images, what I'd like to name them, and exactly where they go. So it's going to iPhone Images, and normally, it has subfolders that it will create based on the shot date. So if I'm pulling different images from different days, it'll do that automatically. But I want them all in one folder, so I'm going to choose None for Create Subfolders. For the custom name, I'll type iPhone Images, and I'll start at number one. If you'd renamed a batch before, it remembers how many you imported, and I imported all of my images so I could delete a few. So it started at 747, so I must have imported 746. This is very helpful for photographers who might have multiple camera cards that they're dumping. So they might have taken three or four cards and filled them up at a wedding, for example. And I love this part, the Apply Metadata. I have some metadata templates. Metadata is extra data about the file, stored in the file. I have one for my company and one for a photographer who's given me permission to use some of his images in my recordings. Ryan Sue, very talented. In basic metadata, I typed my name, and as a little copyright protection, I'll put the year these images were created and all rights reserved. So if somebody uses this commercially without my permission, I have the ability to go back and go after them. So this is everything that I want to bring in. Down below, there's a little Get Media button, but my resolution is low for recording. Although I can't see it, I can just press Return or Enter, and I've selected 25 photos, and they're all being imported. 
and then Bridge will bring me to that folder and bring up the images. So I love to use the slideshow mode to review these, and I think the first series was a sunset at the Embarcadero. The next is the rainbow. So if I want to see these a little bit better, I can choose Edit, Select All, and View Slideshow, or Command L on the Mac, Control L on Windows. And now I can decide what I'd like to keep and what I'd like to remove. And the slideshow automatically advances. And warning to everyone, I did only take these images of the Embarcadero when my car was stopped, <laughs> not while driving. So please don't try to take photos while you're driving. But if I hit spacebar, spacebar pauses on the rainbow that was right on Market Street in downtown San Francisco. And if I click once, it'll zoom to 100% to see if I got this not too shaky. You could see a bit of the rainbow, but I didn't have my good camera with me that day. At least I have a shot of it, some evidence. A low-end camera is better than having no camera at all on you when you encounter a spectacular moment like this. So I could go to the next one and click once and see if it's a little bit better or the composition or angle is better. And I can keep using my right arrow key to go through the series. And now I'm on to the Embarcadero images. So I'm going to hit Escape to get out of full screen mode. And I'm ready to start organizing and sorting these iPhone shots. This has been Importing Camera Images, any type of camera, using Adobe Bridge.